Now we scan out Swaguego. Just gonna give this a shot here on some basics um, for beginners trying to learn some Seneca. Uh, you may have logged on to the Memorize app to see some of the stuff that's offered through the program down there with uh, the JSO Sandy Dowdy. Uh, if you haven't, I would check that out. <clears throat> so I'm gonna talk about um, uh, pronouns or pronominal prefixes or just prefixes in general uh, when it relates to verbs using verbs in Seneca that's one of the biggest things you got to learn is your pronominals or pronouns or prefixes and learning those changes is key to you manipulating the language to um, to be able to use it so in English you can have words that stand by themselves running fishing, hunting, swimming, you know. So maybe somebody asks you, like, what do you like doing? Yeah, you, you can list off what you like doing, running, fishing, hunting, swimming. And in English, a lot of times those can stand on their own. Uh, there can be somebody doing the action, but they can also just stand on their own in a list, and it'll make sense. But in Seneca and the other languages, somebody has to be doing the action. So you need a he runs, she fishes, they hunt, you swim, um, all those different things. And of course, you can go uh, past tense, future tense. Uh, there's other things you can do to manipulate the verbs, but somebody always has to be doing the action. Um, it doesn't just sit there by itself. So that's what I had here. Someone has to be doing the action. Uh, so as you start talking about who's doing the action, um, when we come up here and we talk about stems, uh, Seneca and the other languages, they have different stems or root words. And don't get too much into the technicality of it. Uh, don't let that overwhelm you because I'll do some demonstrations as we keep going here. But, uh, you know, running is going to have its own root. Fishing is going to have its own root. Hunting, swimming. Some of them may be the same, but, you know, there's different roots in the language. So if it's a consonant, if that root starts with a consonant, that's what you hear like C stems, you know, and there's another one, the C stem with a resonant vowel, which I can explain later. Don't, don't get too much into that right now. If the root starts with an A, um, then those would be called A stems. So same thing. We just keep going down the list. It starts with an E, starts with an O, if it starts with an I, uh, you can see those are the stems that they'll be called. Uh, but the majority of the ones you're going to see in Seneca is going to be, a lot of them are going to be C stems and A stems. So those are the ones you really want to try to hammer down uh, as much as you can. So uh, when we talk about the breakdown of pronouns or pronominal prefixes, um, they're broken up into, you have singles, duals, and plurals. Uh, three or more people so when we go down to the singles so I can just you know me you him her it there's a little more to it but we'll just for simplicity we'll just leave it as those for right now uh, like I said well her can also be them someone uh, can extend to it and we'll get into that later on so as you get into the duels uh, again we'll have to explain more so us two inclusive, you two, two males or a male and a female, two females and us two, uh, but not you. So when we get into like these um, inclusive and exclusive, you, they're over here too when it comes to the plurals. So I'll talk a little bit about those after we go through. So now when you get to the three or more, um, again, it's us inclusive all of us including you um, you all they uh, males are a mixed group um, so the mixed group it can be males and females as long as there's at least one male and all the females it's a mixed group um, they females and then all of us but not you so i'll try to talk a little bit about what these inclusives and exclusives mean here these two here so in seneca it's about the person you're talking to. So when you're talking to that person, um, 
let's say I'm talking to you, um, you're either included or excluded when it comes into these groups. Uh, as for us, you know, I can say us too. So I can say me and you went to the movies. I mean, you wouldn't really say, you know, because you were there. Me and you went to the movies last night. But maybe me and my girlfriend went or me and my friend went, you know, or me and me and someone else, me and my dad went to eat. Um, whoever went, we went, but you didn't. But I'm telling you about it. Um, so in that instance, it's me and my dad went to eat last night. In English, it's already implied. Like, you know you weren't there. You know you weren't included. You know that I'm telling you that me and my dad went to eat, which would be this one. Um, but in Seneca, they do make the distinction, you know, maybe you forgot, you know, it'd be like, what did we do last night? So I'll say, Hey, remember we went to eat last night. So I'd use that inclusive, you know, maybe you just lost track of the night or whatever and say, what did we do last night? We, me and you went to eat last night, you know, but in the instance of this one, that would be like me and someone else. So that works the same way with this, these ones here, you know, these ones here is, you know, we went, remember, we all went to the mall or we all went to the museum yesterday. You know, you were there, you know, versus, you know, you can say, remember, I took the class to the museum yesterday. You know, we went to the museum and you stayed behind. So you weren't included. That's the exclusive. Um, if that doesn't make more sense, you can always go into the comments section and ask a question. Um, but there's inclusives and exclusives. So basically you have your your singles, your singles your duals and your plurals so that'll become more apparent as we do some examples here so one of the verbs that a lot of the entrance tests like to use um, is noits so noits is to like something to like it so as you can see it starts with a consonant so it's going to be a c stem um, it has a vowel next to it so that's going to be the, in the technical terms, the resonant vowel. Uh, there's other languages who come up with different ways to uh, address the difference between this and a regular C stem. And we'll get into a regular C stem later. But for right now, uh, we're going to work with the vowel or with the root noits. So if we go through this, um, you can... You have your prefixes in here. So as we go through it, this is the me form, is the K or the G. Uh, in this instance, you're going to use a K. So if I want to say I like it, uh, it would be knoit. And then you can, you can just go through and start using these. So that's you. You like it. He likes it. She likes it. It likes it. So there's uh, me and you like it, you two like it, two males like it, um, two females like it, and me and someone like it. And then you go on to the plurals, so you have all of us like it, you all like it, they males or mixed group likes it, they females like it, and all of us but not you like it so what does it look like when you plug that in well we can take this here and plug it in okay so there it is there's your base word knoits i like it let's plug in you like it snoits so i can do this we can go through all of them right so i can even take this one here and say okay you too like it. Sneenoids. And you can see where the break is on the words, right? So you have your pronominal here or your prefix here, and then you have your root here. So the root stays, the pronominals change. Um, and that's just how it goes. So again, um, these are here because you need to know that there's some you don't necessarily use those letters right now, um, but you need to know they are there because they will come into play when you do other things with, uh, I brought the parentheses. Um, they'll come into play later on when you do stuff to manipulate the words. So 
if I said aguanoids. All of us like it, but not you. That's the implied meaning. Nobody really says that in English, right? But um, there'll be instances where you're talking about things and the person you're talking to wasn't included, so you have to use that agua. Um, but you want to know that those whys, those whys are in there. That way, um, you know, there's no confusion when they start coming back on. So that's how those work. Um, these red ones, in technical terms, uh, they would be called the agents. So you're acting on to something. Um, so again, you're acting on to it, right? You like it, he likes it, they like it. So something's acting on to it. It's going in that direction. So in some of the programs, they like to use the color system. And they'll use reds or guete. So they'll use that. Uh, and this verb works really good because you can use it with these other ones too. So here's these. Um, they call them the blues or gyalya ant. In technical terms, they'll call it the patient. Because um, now something's acting on it. Is acting back on to these things. So they're all the same. Um, as far as who, right? Um, you have the me, you, him, her, it. Uh, they get a little different here. So it is us too. Um, but you can double up on this one. The, the context, if you use it in the right context in a sentence, it can mean us too, including you, or us too, not including you. That'll be surrounded by words that indicate which one it is um, you have you two they males uh, in this instance it becomes two or more for the plurals because you can see it duplicates over here both of these do um, they females um, all of us or it can be all of us but not you uh, you all they males or mixed group they females which have all been duplicated so in uh, reality, when you get to the blue ones, there's uh, really only 11 changes um, or 11 conjugations because you got five here, you got four right here, and then so that's nine, and then you have these two right here, so that makes it 11. So all these ones um, are just kind of duplicated. You don't have to write those in there, but if you want to fill in all 15 spots, uh, you can do that. So what happens when we plug in these blue ones? Um, if we go back to the example here, if I was to plug in this K, that is Knoitz. I like it. Okay. But what happens when we plug in this here? So a Knoitz. So Aknoitz, it likes me. So now it's different, right? Instead of me liking it, it likes me. Uh, if I was to plug in the sa, so now sanoitz, it likes you. It likes you. So that's different from if I was to plug in this s and say you like it, snoitz. And we can go down the list. Okay, it likes him, right? It likes him. It likes her. And I can just keep going, right? We can, we can go down this whole list and say, it likes them. It likes them versus they like it. All right? So if you have any questions on that, you can just... Uh, Type anything in the comments bar and ask about that. But you want to learn your pronouns for a C stem. And one of the best ways to do it is just to uh, get this list going. Um, the reason why I have the list in this format, because there's other ways you can write it too. Um, if you go across, like let's go back up to this red one here. So if we go across these ones here. Um, you're always included in it, okay? 
So this one, this first one, um, well, let me go back here. So this first one is me, right? If you go into this one here, it's me and you. So me is always included. And the same thing, if you go into this one, it's me and everybody else. It's all of us. But you know that across the across the board, you know that I am included all the way across. Okay. So now when we go across this one, the second person, it's you. This is you too. And this is you all. So it's always going out. It's all you all the way across. It's you. It just changes in numbers, right? So all the way across. So same thing here. This is males. Uh, it can be two males or it can be more than three or more males across the board. This is where the mixed groups come in because you do have mixed groups, right? There can be guys and girls mixed together. So this is the one as you start getting into mixed groups. If it's anywhere where it has guys and girls, you want to use those um, to communicate that. And then you have the females. So you have she, uh, two females, and three or more females all the way across. So it's females all the way across. It can be animals too, or unknowns or ambiguous, uh, which we'll get into that later. But for now, let's just keep it simple with females. Uh, this one isn't as straightforward, but uh, you have it. So that can be like an animal. Um, that's usually what we use it for as an animal. Um, and then these, then you have your exclusives in here. So this is where it's, I'm talking about me and me and someone and me and a group of people, uh, but not you. Uh, you're not included in there. Um, the person you're talking to isn't included in there. Uh, like I said, in English, it's already understood. The person you're talking to knows whether they were there or not. And in Seneca, uh, they'll make the distinction between if you're included or not. So um, it's important to learn all those. Uh, you can make flashcards with all these, attaching them to notes. There's charts. You can go to the website. Um, well, there's Memorize. Memorize is an app, but there's also another one that's free called Quizlet. Uh, you can get that on your phone. You can get that on your computer. You can go in there and type Seneca language, and it's going to have all these laid out already. I think there's even audio attached to them. But that's one of the first things you want to get started with is learning these, uh, at least these C stems for these ones. Now, there's differences when you go use other C stems, but if you get a handle on these, that's a good start to working with the language and you just practice them on your own. So good study habits would be try not to tackle all of these all at once. Um, you know, you don't want to take, try to take all 15 of these all in a row here. Uh, maybe just start with just the single columns and see if you can learn them in order, out of order. Uh, once you start getting them down where, you know, you're not getting stumped, um, then you move on to this dual column here and uh, start mixing them in with your singles and see if you can go through all 10 of them without missing any. Because uh, you want to take them in little chunks. That'll help you. I mean, unless you're really good, you can take them all at once. Uh, then you mix these in here. And once you can get all 15 in order, out of order, any order, uh, and also you want to you want to practice doing not only uh, Seneca to English, but English to Seneca. Uh, English to Seneca seems to always be the more difficult one, uh, because when you go from Seneca to English, that's all you have to do is think of the English. But when you have to think of the Seneca and you're not used to doing that, um, that's where it gets a little more challenging. So same thing. Uh, the good thing about this, the blues is, like I said, this this column, yeah, you got to do five at a time. Uh, but once you get to this column, you only really have to add four. And once you get to this column, you really only have to add two more. And if you know those all in and out of order, back and forth, uh, English to Seneca, Seneca to English, 
you're going to be on your way to um, at least conjugating some C-stem resonant vowel verbs, which we can also give you more practice. Um, there's other verbs that use that. So, uh, But for right now, I'll uh, cut this video off. Like I said, if you have any questions, uh, there is a comment section. Um, I'm just trying to do my best to help uh, beginners. I'm closer to the beginning than I am to being you know, some professional fluent speaker, but I know what it's been like to learn along the way and have the help that I've had and the understandings that I've come along and maybe the way I explain it helps you. Uh, I try to stay pretty accessible on uh, teaching and sharing what works for me, uh, but there's a lot of other good teachers out there too um, from the different territories. You can always ask them to uh, so again, anybody, if one of the pro teachers sees this and uh, any mistakes you want to correct, like I said, feel free to help somebody along too. Uh, I'm still learning just like everybody else. So I'll cut it off there for now and uh, hope everybody got something out of that.